My DeLorean has a pretty much stock suspension, but it's a 40 year old suspension and it's showing its age. Most noticeable were some vibrations in the front end that made it less pleasant to drive than I'd like. I had started by refurbishing what was already there. Replaced the shocks, all the bushings, the ball joints, the pivot bolts, boxing in the lower control arms for strength, and adding some stabilizers to improve handling. This all helped, quite a bit actually, but there were still some vibrations I couldn't quite get rid of. So this year, I decided to go all in and update the entire front suspension with better parts. Build aluminum lower control arms, adjustable upper control arms, coilovers, resurfaced rotors, the works. Step one is getting everything apart, starting with all the stuff that's in the way. First, the brake caliper and rotor come out. This is Martin Gukowski's big brake kit. I installed this when I was having some brake system issues I couldn't quite figure out how to resolve, so I used this as an excuse to just replace the whole thing. Braking is much better now, so I call this a good upgrade. I'm sending the rotors out to be resurfaced, and that means separating the hub from the rotor. The bolts came out easily enough, but the hub and rotor fit together pretty snugly, and I needed to tap them apart. There was enough surface rust here that I had trouble telling where the rotor ended and where the hub began, and I mistakenly struck the wheel bearing instead of the hub. Ah. So I guess I'm replacing the wheel bearing, but that's a problem for reassembly. With the rotors off to the machine shop, everything else came apart pretty easily. No, it didn't. I spent at least 15 minutes getting this cotter pin on the lower ball joint straight enough that I could tap it out with a punch. Which also got stuck. The sway bar cotter pin wasn't cooperating either, but that was solved with the careful application of power tools. This is not how you're supposed to separate the ball joint from the steering knuckle. I somehow forgot that pickle forks exist and that I own three of them, so I just hit the arm with a brass hammer. I mean, it worked, but don't do this. Or do, it's your car. And since I forgot about pickle forks, I decided to unbolt the upper ball joint from the control arm and then still had to figure out how to get it off the knuckle. The nut on this pivot bolt wasn't a problem, but the bolt itself, but the bolt itself was in tight and had to be tapped out and pried and tapped again. This is what brass hammers are for, so you don't damage the harder steel parts when you resort to hitting things. It's a long bolt. Before I could remove the lower control arm, I had to get the shock out. And before I could do that, I had to compress the spring. This is by far the most dangerous part of this entire process, as these things have enough stored energy to kill you before you even notice that it slipped off its perch. This giant staple remover here is one of the safer ways to get the spring out. It's a challenge to get on the spring though. The coils are a bit too tight for the arms to fit between, and you have to grab as much of the spring as you can to compress it enough to clear the perch. The shock pivot bolt came out with a little more assistance from the brass hammer. This thing is proving quite useful. The nut on the top of the shock, that would not come free, at least on the driver's side. So I had to resort to the hammer's more aggressive cousin. The bottom of the shock was wedged in the control arm pretty tight, but a little prying took care of that. And finally, the incredibly dangerous spring. I grabbed as many coils as I could, but I still had to pry it out a little to clear the perch. At least the lower control arm didn't put up a fight. Behind the lower control arm is this cavity for some reason. It seems to exist to collect water and turn into rust. Mine was mostly filled with cracked epoxy and some surface rust, but not too bad. I had chipped out a fair bit of that when I'd replaced the bearings last time and I'd painted everything black. And now all that paint is pretty much gone. I'd have preferred to use POR15 instead of spray paint, but I don't have the right tools to spray that. A friend of mine suggested using lithium grease instead of paint, so I'm giving that a try. The idea is that it sticks to the surfaces without drying out, so we'll see if that does the trick. Now to put it all back together. The new parts come from a few different vendors. These lower control arms are carved from Build Aluminum for DeLorean Go. These are very solid and they won't flex or rust like the original stamped steel ones. 
They come with new ball joints already installed. They also include new pivot bolts, but I'll be using the longer ones that came with the DeLorean Go stabilizers instead. The control arms have removable perches for the springs. Since I'm using coilovers, I don't need them, so they're coming off. Now, allow me to demonstrate my process for installing the lower control arm pivot bolt. First, position the bolt in the frame, line up the control arm, slide the bolt through the arm and out the other side. Then take the bolt back out again when you realize you forgot to add anti-seize. Coat an anti-seize and reinstall the bolt. Remove the bolt when you notice the washer you forgot to install. Add the washer and reinstall the bolt. Remove the bolt when you realize you put the stabilizer on backward. Flip the stabilizer and reinstall the bolt with the washers. On the other side, put on the washer, the stabilizer, the other washer, and the nut. And done. Super easy and only eight steps. I can only wonder if there's a faster way to do it. The upper control arms are from Timeless Steel. They're built around a fully adjustable SPC aftermarket muscle car arm and include detailed instructions from both SPC and Timeless Steel. A stock DeLorean setup only lets you adjust the front toe in and caster for alignment. This adds the ability to adjust the camber as well. It's also a lot more substantial than the stock stamp steel arms and adds a lot more strength to the suspension. The catch is that the ball joint is a different design from stock and won't fit in the steering knuckle without reaming it out a bit. This means that once I install these arms, I can't go back to stock without also replacing the knuckle. But I mean, I'm never gonna do that. Timeless Steel includes the reaming tool with their kit. Using it was fairly simple. Just pour on some cutting oil and use a power drill to ream it. I did this slowly, only removing a little material at a time and doing frequent test fits to ensure that I didn't make the hole too big. You can't add material back if you drill too far after all. It took maybe 10 to 15 minutes per side. There are different arms for each side of the car, but they're clearly labeled so it's kind of hard to mix them up. Otherwise, they mount just like the stock arm. There are a couple of extra bolts that need to be torqued and you have to make sure that the turnbuckles are tight, but that's about it. The instructions were very clear, which made all of this very easy. But before I can mount the ball joints in the knuckle, I need to put in new coilovers. These are a DeLorean specific kit from KW. They even have photos of the DeLorean suspension system in the manual. The ride height and stiffness are fully adjustable and they're a lot safer to handle than the old just waiting to kill you springs. The only slightly odd thing is that the fit in the control arms was a tiny bit loose. There's a very small gap between the shock pivot and the inside of the arm, maybe half a millimeter. And as you slide the shock back and forth, you can hear it click against the arm. I don't think this happens with stock LCAs. Those are probably thin enough metal that they compress around the base of the shock when you tighten the pivot nut. These solid billet arms don't compress. It's kind of the whole point. My solution was to order some thin shims from McMaster Car. I found that two 0.1 millimeter shims got rid of most of the shifting. This might not have been necessary at all, but it makes me feel better. They are kind of a pain to install since you have to balance the shims right on the very edge of the bolt while inserting the shock, which really means you will knock the shims off a few times before you get it right. But it worked and the play is mostly gone. Now I can slot the ball joint into the knuckle, tighten the nut and insert the cotter pin. Insert the one moment. There, super easy. Hope to never take it off. And now a story on the importance of using castle nuts and cotter pins in critical suspension components. Back when I was replacing the bushings and generally refurbishing the stock front suspension, I was running a little low on funds and decided to go with some cheaper ball joints. These relied on nylocks instead of proper castle nuts and didn't even have a hole for a cotter pin. A couple weeks after I put them in, I took a trip to a Northeast Region DeLorean Tech Day, about an hour and a half from me. I was on the exit ramp from 495 to 90 and the front of my car suddenly dropped an inch. This was accompanied by a continuous loud screeching sound of metal scraping metal. There was no shoulder on the ramp, but I still had control of the car. So I decided to keep going until I could safely pull off the road and not be a danger to other traffic. There was a service area just a mile down the road, but that screeching did not sound good. So I pulled off onto the dirt shoulder of I-90. As soon as the right wheel dropped off the pavement, the right side fell even further and the wheel yanked to the right. Thankfully, I still had enough control to stop safely. Here's what I found. This is the lower control arm buried in the dirt. This is the shaft of the ball joint. And this is the knuckle the shaft should be in. The nylock was gone. Boxing in the arm may have saved it from collapsing and destroying the entire suspension. 
That screeching noise was the lower control arm riding on the inside of the rim after it broke free of the knuckle. You can see a shiny ring where it shaved away some aluminum from the brim. When I pull it off onto the shoulder, the control arm bounced off the rim and onto the dirt, which yanked me to the side even more. You can see the drag mark here. It starts in the dirt, not on the pavement. The tow driver and I tried to get the ball joint back into the knuckle so we could at least drive it onto the truck, but without a nut, it just popped right out again. We took off the wheel and he put the rotor on a wooden block and dragged it onto the truck. And we drove it the rest of the way to the check day. I could have had it towed home, but I figured having another dozen DeLorean owners to help was a better plan. We found a couple of nuts to hold the ball joint on, but this only lasted for about 50 feet before it popped off again. So not only did the nylock fail, but the threads on the cheap ball joint failed too. I replaced both of them with new quality ball joints with castle nuts and cotter pins. This could have gone much, much worse. If this had failed while I was in the left lane of the highway, I could have careened into another car. Even if I was able to maintain control, I might not have made it across the two or three lanes of traffic before the arm fell off onto the rim, assuming it even landed on the rim in the first place, and I didn't just dig into the pavement and spin me around at 70 miles an hour. The tow driver said these kind of failures often twist the suspension and punch through the fender, which in a DeLorean could mean ruining the fiberglass tub as well as the fender. My car was basically unscathed. I got very, very lucky. So I'm going to go and put on this castle nut and this cotter pin. I also made sure to bend the pin around the nut so that there's no chance of it coming loose. I got my newly resurfaced rotors back from the machine shop. I just have to mount them on the hub, slide onto the axle, and it's all set. Now I just have to do the other side and, oh, right, the wheel bearing. The original DeLorean wheel bearings tend to spontaneously disassemble themselves when you take the wheel off. This happened to me when I installed the big brake kit a few years back, but those bearings have been on there for 40 years at that point. I still order new bearings whenever I know I'm going to take the wheel off, just in case. I have like five of them now. Installing new bearings isn't too hard if you have a press, which I do. Remove the snap ring, press the old ones out, and press the new ones in. Unfortunately, the bottle jack on my super cheap Harbor Freight press has decided to just leak hydraulic fluid everywhere instead of behaving like a jack. I couldn't find a direct replacement, but I found something that was close enough. It needed a few small modifications to fit on the press's plate, but that's nothing a few minutes with a drill press wouldn't solve. Good as new. Maybe better. I mean, this jack won't leak. Probably. So back to the hub. Pop out the snap ring, press out the old bearing, and press in the new one. I had kept one of the original broken bearings, ground down the edges a bit, and designated it as the DeLorean wheel bearing press tool to help get new bearings fully seated. This makes sure that the press is pushing against the edges of the bearing, not the race, because I don't want to do this again. With the snap ring back in, I can mount the resurface rotor and put it all back in the car. That leaves the caliper, some new pads, a bit of grease for all the new ball joints, and the wheel. So that's the front suspension. I'll figure out the shock stiffness and the ride height once I do the rear suspension, which will be the next video. So be sure to hit all the buttons so you can be notified about when that's up. Thanks for watching.